The one I always think of from the movies is when they do this. Do you ever do that? When they circle I think that takes you more with the, with the imagination to, um, to a woman's intimate parts. This and this here? more to, to a man, yes. Ah, that's interesting. Like, I never thought as a of woman, that. I would do good. this. I would, as a woman, I, I would do this. Yeah, as a can... man, I would do this to a woman. Yeah, this causes a, a little tingle in my body. Yeah, I can feel it. So, <laughs> she's doing something right. I don't know. It's like, I, I can feel it. So welcome to this edition to Sex Signals. Uh, we're gonna be talking to, with the beautiful Alexandra today. Hello. How are you? Awesome, thanks. Good, good, awesome. And uh, we're gonna be going through her favorite sex signals, the ones that she would use, or and another way to say it is flirting signals. This is how women flirt, they, how they communicate. It's their subcommunication. It's the way when they're interested in you that they talk to you. Uh, especially the more feminine she is, the more she's going to be using these types of sex signals. So it's really good when you watch these that you watch through different women do them because they're going to do them a little differently. And as you start to see the different women doing these, you're going to start to pick up on them and pick up on the feeling and the vibration. Really pay attention to the feeling because that's what's important. It's what they're conveying. And then start to go out in the world and watch them. Watch them at bars, coffee shops, uh, lounges. Uh, people on dates and start to notice how the women are doing it uh, on those dates and in those coffee shops and in those bars. Because pretty soon you're, you're going to start to see it everywhere. You're going to realize it's almost like seeing the matrix, how much of this is actually going on. And it's going to change your relationship with the feminine. The more feminine a girl is, the more likely she is to do this and the more often she will do it. So with that said, we're going to get started and we're going to start to look at uh, the way Alexandra likes to communicate subconsciously. Oh, and by the way, uh, as Perper said, when he, when he really created this study, when he went through these originally and came up with all these, this communication, there's a gentleman named Perper that came up with them. If you've seen some of the previous videos, we talk about it. He said that only in his, in his studies from thousands of hours of watching people communicate and connect, that only about one in 31 men could actually read these consciously. Most men either responded to them subconsciously or couldn't read them at all, which has got to be frustrating for women. Yes. So how often, uh, that, that's my, my first question, how often do you go out and you're, you're trying to flirt with a guy and he's either not getting it, half getting it, or is just scared of it, or what, what goes on for you? It happens a lot, like, like you said, but that's also part of the game because men like mm, distinguish that themselves with this. The men that see these signals are the men that like you believe uh, are right for you. This is interesting. It's the best answer I've got so far, I think. The men that actually can pick up on them are the right guys for her versus I need to figure out how to get this guy to come to me, right? And that's, that's a phenomenal answer, actually. I love it. Now, have you ever realized the guy didn't fully understand them, but you were able to kind of use them to lure them in anyways, or to get them to do stuff anyways? Yeah. Yeah, because girls are very powerful at getting guys to do things that they don't realize they're doing, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a superpower women have. So with that said, we're gonna get started and we're gonna start to take a look at these. Um, are you ready? Sure. Awesome. Okay, the first one, we got them on a board over here, so I'll be looking over this way, is, uh, is peekaboo. Um, this is awesome because in the last video uh, with Aria, she said she doesn't really do this one. To me, it's a really cool one. So this is, uh, how, oh, how do you do this first off? Do you do it with the menus, magazines? Do you do this in coffee shops? Where do you do it? Yeah, it's actually the one I use the most and you can use it like with anything. Uh, even talking while, while you talk with a friend, you can look over the shoulder of a friend. So I'm standing in front of you, there's a guy you like behind you and I'm like, blah, 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 blah. And you talk and from time to time, I look back, then I switch back to you and it looks supernatural because like you do that all the time with, with people that you talk to, you just don't look all the time into their eyes, yeah. you look. Well, this one yeah, kind of yeah. blends with one, uh, I, they call it the sidelong glance, which is number four, which is also how women do this one a lot. They kind of glance and they go back, glance, go back. So that's what you're, that's really kind of what you're doing here. Do you ever do it with a book or do you ever do it with a menu? Do you ever do it with like when you're sitting in a coffee shop and you just kind of flirt, you look, and glance that way? Yes. It's really the same thing. It's yeah, the it's same really thing. The, the same thing. It doesn't matter where you look in, into, okay. it's, it matters how you switch the look from what, what you're supposed to, to look at 
and how do how you do the, the switch to look at the at the men? Do you think you could do that look a little bit? I'm curious because the reason I ask you this is because there are girls. There is the look where a girl's just looking. Oh, what's that over there? And a guy could confuse that. And there's a different energy to look, isn't there? And how does the energy look a little different? Like if a guy, if you glance at a guy and you're attracted to him, how does that energy look a little different? Hmm. Can I grab a book nah. to show you? Now, that's really nice. Can you feel the tension? There's a little tension and a little flow. There's a little like she's sending intention to me. Now, can you do it again as if you're just glancing up to see something and then you ca and I catch your eye, but you're not really interested? You see the difference? There was no hold, there was no intention. She just looked at me, okay, and moved on. So if you have to, you play that over and over and see the difference, because it's actually huge. You guys will go, oh, that's so subtle. It is subtle when you first see it, but later it gets more and more obvious, right? So awesome, thank you for that. So now we're going to talk about the uh, the shy geisha, and uh, this is one that is a little more direct for women. This is like in a feminine way; it's still very indirect, but it's her way of saying, "I'm interested in you." So, um, can you uh, can you share how do you do the shy geisha? Yes, a lot, and it's pretty related to to the first one. Uh, it's um, also all about the way you look mm -hmm. at a person. That it's all about the the, the, the gaze. Yes. Nice. So can you do the gaze for me? Mm, yes. Okay, awesome. So let's say if I see you. Nice. That's it. So hers is a little more subtle than Aria's. You notice the difference? Aria's a little more, and, and it's a little more, it's tighter. It's like, it's almost like it feels, it feels very different. I like it though. Um, but it's very, still very obvious. So can you guys, what I would encourage you to do is go look at the videos of Aria, Yaz, and notice the difference in the way they do that because there is a big difference between them and, and that'll really help you to understand how this works uh, a lot better so you can develop better communication skills. Awesome, thank you for that. That was really good. Nice. So. Next one. Next one, Okay. let's see. Uh, sidelong glance. Now the sidelong glance, the way uh, this one, works. It's really similar to what we did earlier with the glancing with the book, but um, the way we look at it, and you tell me if this is true, this is, this mm -hmm. is your interpretation, not mine. Um, when you're out and you see a guy or something, somebody that you're curious about maybe, but, but you're not saying yes, you're not saying no, but you keep looking to kind of feel it out. Do you ever do that? Yes. And then you glance, you're like, mm, interesting. Maybe look back, glance. Do you do, so how does that work for you? And it's again related to, to the uh, to the first ones mm -hmm. it's slightly different like you said you're not sure the, the way you look like mm, for example the shy geisha it's like pretty obvious the mm -hmm. the, the way you look down and look back but this one yeah you're interested but maybe not enough yet so it's just you're waiting for more signals okay and can you can you demonstrate that one i see the intention Look at the intention in the glance. There's curiosity, and uh, and it almost feels to me like as a guy that if I walk up, she's not saying, she's saying maybe I'll like you, maybe I won't. We'll see. <laughs> and she's saying I'm getting to know you right now, and uh, so you have to kind of be okay with that. I could actually wa see myself walking up, and she'd be like, and you tell me this is true, like oh hi, like almost like surprised, like acting surprised, probably not really yeah. surprised, yeah, that you came over. Um, so let's play with the next one. Yep. Um, uh, jewelry tug. This one is, uh, I think it's very sexy. Yeah. And it can be done with a lot of pieces of jewelry, right? Yes. So w which is the one that you use a lot? Do you, is there a particular type of jewelry you like to do this one? I usually do that with my rings, but it's not necessarily that something all the time. Like yeah. maybe I do it when I'm nervous or something like that. But when I do it with my necklace and when I touch my neck, for sure a signal. Okay. So how, and so then this one can be just nervousness is what you're saying. So she's, you, is it just like... Oh, it's you, a habit. Okay. And so can you demonstrate the next one? What is that one? So uh, I, that, that little finger touch is nice. You're actually, so notice she's actually drawing attention to her neckline, which is a more, more, more vulnerable, sensual part of the human body. 
I think it's more about that. You yeah. you use the jewelry to show others. Yeah, know. we got a shiny object here, right? You got this nice shiny object, and you're like pointing it at the guy a little bit, calling him over with it. That actually had almost that that had more effect almost than the um, the way you did it had more effect on me almost than the shy geisha because that the way you touched right here it was like it was literally pulling on me. I could feel it as you did it, so that was really cool. Yeah, it's not that subtle. Huh? It's not as what? It's not that subtle as Shai Yeah, it's not as subtle. Yeah, I saw, because uh, when I saw somebody else do it, it your, yours had more effect than hers. So, sorry, whoever that is. I'm not, not going to tell you. Exposed shoulder. You, ever, you do this one a lot? Exposed skin, exposed shoulder, showing a little more skin. Yes. Especially if I have a coat or if, um, if I have a, actually a, a shirt like this, mm -hmm. and I just leave it drop or maybe um, the the bra just a little bit. It's just it never stays there like yeah. on with with no purpose. Like if you leave it like that, it's either you don't care or you either want it to to yeah. show it. Like yeah, that's the that's the powerful part. It's that she's not going to just leave it there for a while, right? Do you ever just do it a little bit and then when he looks, you put it back or something like that? Or do you, you, you don't just always leave it there? No, I, I don't leave it because at some point I get shy with this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's intimate, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's very so, intimate. Do you feel comfortable showing it on camera? Mm, I, I, I don't think I can with this. Oh, okay. A little, because uh, the shirt doesn't go that far. Yeah, it doesn't go. Okay, so you have to use your imagination on yeah. this one. Some of these, get, you can feel the intimacy, guys. If you pay attention, there's a sense of vulnerability or intimacy that goes with each of these. So. Uh, you got you to gotta understand when I'm working with these with the model, I want to make sure they feel comfortable because they're putting it out to you guys. I mean, they want to help you understand, right? Because the more you, you guys understand, the better their lives are. Okay. And the more confident guys they, they have in the world. Um, so let's go to the next one. How about um, innocent touch? This one I see a lot when a girl likes a guy. Some girls do it a lot, by the way. I've seen some girls when they really like you, they'll just, there's just a little boom, boom, boom here and there. Oh yeah, tell me about that. And oh, and so you do your version of it instead of me doing it. You're supposed to be doing this, not me. So how does that work for you? I don't use it that much, but I do. And yeah, it's usually like when you talk and I'm really interested, like, oh yes, I, I really, I can relate to that. Or like even to say, I'm, I'm sorry when I'm passing by and I, I'm like, sorry, Brian, or something like that. And she's got a good touch, by the way, too. Because energy comes through touch, and so when she touches me, I, f I feel the I feel the energy coming through. So that was really good. It was like uh, it's like you turned it on for a second. Did you do that consciously, by the way? Mm, you know what I mean? Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. So you knew you were turning on this really good energy in your touch, or did you know? Is it just something you do unconsciously? Mm, I do it consciously. Okay, cool. That's awesome. And so there's something we also call plausible deniability, which is women do all this subtle stuff, and then later they go, "What are you talking about?" No, not me. Innocent. Yeah, the women love to play that innocent game. So, um, and I think it's cool. It's part. Of, it's part of the dance. It makes it more fun. Um, so another one uh, that we've got here: uh, innocent touch, leaning in, um, and it's pretty much what it says it is. So you're, you're on a date, and there's this leaning in energy. Like, like, do you ever just lean in a little too close on a date or anything like that? Or maybe you're sitting at a table together yeah. or something like that. And that's that's similar to space invasion, but I think it's a little mm, different because space yeah. invasion, you're, you're not, it's more like this. You walk yeah. in too close. So how does the lean in work different? That that actually works unconsciously. Like when you listen to a story that that guy says, or even when you stand like this and you tend to to go for it, and then at some point you wake up and you're like, okay, I'm too close. Oh, yeah. You go back. How, how can you be too close? This, 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 I just don't agree <laughs> with that. I don't know. My but yeah. For that moment. Yeah. It does happen. It happens with the foot too. You'll see the foot start moving towards a person or they'll start pointing towards a person. I've seen that too. Yeah. And then uh, and then they 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 orientate themselves. I almost wonder if guys, do you see guys doing that more? Do you see a lot of guys orientating themselves towards you a lot when they're attracted? Yeah, actually. They, when they want to ex to escape, I usually see them like, like this. Oh, nice. So, but they never know what they're doing. Yeah, so it's interesting. So you get guys that do want to escape too. So it's interesting too. Everybody, everybody has both. Don't worry. So the next one on our list is necking. And that one sounds really sexy and fun. Like, you know, you're making out when you're kids, but really it's something different. It's about exposing the neck. Uh, Cause the neck is such a vulnerable part, part of the body. You know, the nape of the neck is so sensitive. 
Um, how do you, how does that one work for you? I think it's one of the most intimate uh, signals and also the most obvious. Yeah. Um, it's just, I don't know, something like this. Oh yeah. And then you open that neck. It's almost like, I don't know why shows, I'm, I'm thinking vampire for some reason. <laughs> it shows a lot of vulnerability. It does, yeah. And so you, you literally pull your hair to one side? Yeah. Because I know she just pulled it back a little there and I could imagine that if you're really interested, you're really going to pull so it back. And You can actually show it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. of course. The next one is hair play, which you just kind of did. It goes along with necking to some degree. I see a lot of women do hair play where they're actually twisting the hair up in their fingers, pulling it sensually, doing stuff like this. Do you do a lot of stuff like that? Um, I do mostly like this and it's more about the necking when I expose my neck okay. and I put my hair like this or on the other side or okay. I don't usually play like that with it. I see a lot of women also play with the hair and it's more nervous response and I need to get any you know, I've said this in other videos you need to be sure you know the difference you can tell the difference between nervous energy and uh, energy that's being uh, directed at you and usually a woman is doing three or four of these, they, they're, they're mixing them up. It's kind of unconscious, it's just part of the game and the dance. Yeah. The next one is the uh, self-caress. Um, and I've seen guys do these too, by the way, and there's a mask in the way to do some of these. And I may talk about that in one of these videos. I have a friend that's phenomenal as a man at doing some of these, and uh, it's really interesting. But how do you do the, uh, the self-caress? Mm. Do you do that one? Yes, okay. I do. Okay. Uh, basically, you know, on the on the hands or, or if you have your hands on the on the table, just Start like petting them like that. Yes, or also on the shoulder, on the nice. neck. Nice. So that's and then you, you squeeze in a little, so you get that little extra yeah. from the whole body. That was nice. That's a nice little added piece. Uh, I was looking at what Aria was saying yesterday. She'll open this way and caress this way. But then when you did it, you did this, which then created. This is much more vulnerable. I would do like I don't know and showing the inside of your arms or the inside of your feet or... Yeah, because it gets all that, that vulnerable space in your body, right? Yeah. yeah. And do you ever do that one or is it on a rare occasion? Would that be more rare? Mm, very rare. Very rare, okay. With somebody you really trust, you'd have to do that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so the next one we need another prop for, so I'm gonna grab the prop. Um, and it's playing with a glass. And uh, this one to me is, is, I think this is very sexy. You see it in a lot of movies and the girls are actually playing with the glass and there's several ways they might do it. And, and there's the standard typical way that everybody thinks of and I don't know what you do. So can you, can you share with us uh, that one? Please? I think more like this. Oh, that's nice, yeah. The one I always think, yeah, she's playing with the stem. So the one I always think of from the movies is when they do this. Do you ever do that? When they circle I think that takes you more with, uh, with the imagination to um, to a woman's inter, um, intimate parts, this and this here? more to to a man. Yes. Ah, that's interesting. Like I never thought as a of woman, that. I would do good. this. I would, as a woman, I, I would do this. Yeah, as a man, I would do this to a woman. Yeah, this causes a a little tingle in my body. Yeah, I can feel it. <laughs> so she's doing something right. I don't know. It's just like I, I can feel it. So cool. So that was the the wine glass, and then um, okay, the pose. I think you're good at this one. This is probably your. Yeah, it's, it's basically all the time, so I don't know how much it relates to dating. I know these yeah. guys are going to really love this segment of Sex Signals. You did a great job, and I really appreciate the, the depth of feeling you put into demonstrating those. It's going to be super powerful. Um, Thank with, you, too. You're welcome. And for you guys out there, um, really study this stuff go over it a bunch of times go over all the videos compare the differences get out there and practice get out there and practice as soon as you can watch learn the more you learn the faster you learn the more you're going to change your life and we're going to have more happy women more happy men because of it because you're really going to under start to understand what it is to communicate on a subtle level and it's a lot of fun just plain fun so with that said guys remember only the confident really live take care see you in the next video